Along with UConn, the East region features three other Power Six Conference Tournament winners. Can any of them slow down Danny Hurley and the Huskies train? You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, folks? Happy Tuesday. Welcome into the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, a daily national college hoop show, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your co-hosts. I'm Andy Patton. He is Isaac Shade. You are joining us at the best place to get college basketball content every single day, especially here in March as we are in that odd period of time between Selection Sunday and the actual start of the NCAA tournament. This is kind of that waiting game period, the bracket filling out period of time. Hope you all have had a fantastic time working on those brackets, tinkering with those brackets. If you missed it, we had a fantastic show doing our bracket breakdown reveal. It is live on YouTube and on audio platforms on Locked On College Basketball. Today, though, we are going through the left side of the bracket, the West region, the East region. We're going to go through the matchups. We're going to talk about our favorite games, our favorite players, our sleepers, who we think is going to win. We're going to close out the show discussing our overall Sweet 16 Elite Eight Final Four from this side of the bracket. We'll, of course, bring you the South and Midwest regions on Wednesday's episode. And then, Isaac, boom, we are in two actual basketball games to start talking about after that. So excited to be here talking about that. Today's episode is brought to you all by FanDuel. Folks, make every moment more. New customers who join today, you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. All right, Isaac, let's start here. East region, uh, fantastic slate of teams here. We talked about it in the cold open. Four Power Six Conference winners are your top four seeds. You got UConn at the top. You got Iowa State, the Big 12 winner as the two seed. Illinois, Big 10 winner as the three seed. Auburn as the four seed. Uh, we also have the A-10 winner. We got the uh, AAC winner here. The only two Power Six Conference Tournament winners that we're not talking about in this region are NC State and Oregon, the two 11 seeds and the two bid thieves. So we kind of talked about it a little bit already. Feels like a bit of a tr tough draw for yeah. UConn here just to, to get a lot of teams that are carrying some momentum, a lot of teams that are playing some really good basketball. You kind of expect this to maybe be the, the region we'd see North Carolina or, or even Houston or Purdue instead. Uh, the defending champs, the number one overall seed, they got a pretty tough draw here in the East. Yeah, they do. And, and I, I think the pushback on that um, conference tournament champions are joined by might be, and, and you actually said this before we started recording, that none of those other three schools were like the number one seed in in their uh, in their conference tournament. Right. Iowa State was behind Houston, Illinois right. behind Purdue, and who did I, Auburn behind Tennessee as the one seed. So yeah. I hear that, but man, that's tough for UConn. And for those watching on YouTube, if you haven't caught on or didn't hear us say it on, on Monday's shows, mm -hmm. that UConn is joined in the top half of this bracket by two other schools that were with them in the Final Four last year in FAU and San Diego State. So there's all that experience that they bring back. I mean, folks well know that FAU basically kept that whole thing intact. And so, Andy, I'm right with you, dude. I, I think this is going to be a tough road for UConn. But it's one that I might say that I think they are up to the task mm -hmm. of doing. The question is, will they? And do you and I have that as we go all the way through this bracket? Well, let's talk about the matchups here. I'm going to I'm going to read you each of the matchups we got in the East region. Uh, talk about what time the games are starting now that we have those schedules all out. We got some fan duel lines to discuss as well. Uh, and then I want to talk about our favorite matchups, who we have coming out of the region, uh, some potential sleeper teams as well. So obviously, Isaac, we start with UConn taking on Stetson, the 16th seed. That game will be on Friday at 2.45 all the times. Our Eastern time, it'll be on CBS in Brooklyn. UConn favored by a whole bunch of points. 26 <laughs> and a half is the line right now at FanDuel. Uh, most of the rest of the lines here are going to be quite a bit closer, including FAU uh, versus Northwestern, the 8 versus 9, Friday at 12.15. CBS as well, also in Brooklyn, of course. FAU favored by 2.5. That is the first tip on Friday, so the opening game that we all get to watch. Uh, the second day of the tournament, FAU Northwestern. Uh, five, uh, San Diego State versus 12 UAB, Friday at 145 on TNT. This game and the next game, Auburn versus Yale, will both be in Spokane. San Diego State favored by seven and a half. Auburn, the four seed against Yale, the 13 seed. Auburn, pretty big line there, favored by 12 and a half against the Bulldogs. 
Uh, moving down, BYU versus Duquesne. BYU is the sixth seed. Duquesne, the 11th seed, the champions out of the A-10, despite being a sixth seed coming into the Atlantic 10 tournament. Uh, that's the first Thursday game here in the East region at 1240 on True TV in Omaha. BYU favored by nine and a half. Then we got Illinois, Moorhead State, the three versus 14, Thursday at 310 on True TV in Omaha. Illinois favored by 11 and a half there. 7-10, a lot of really intriguing 7-10 matchups in this yeah. game. Yeah, uh, this is among my favorites. Washington State against Drake Thursday at 10:05 on True TV, Omaha for the location there, and that one has Drake, the underseeded team, the 10 seed, favored by one and a half on FanDuel, and then closing it out, Iowa State, the two seed versus 15 seeded South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits. That game is Thursday at 7:35 on True TV in Omaha, Iowa State, big favorite there by 16 and a half points. Isaac. What games, what matchups here in the first round specifically really kind of stand out to you that you want to talk about? Uh, the, the first one I want to mention is actually that game. The, the one game we have in this region where the, lo- the worst seeded team mm-hmm. is the favorite, Drake over Washington State. Uh, Tucker DeVries, we've, I feel like we've said his name about 87 times in the past 48-ish hours, Andy. Mm-hmm. But the nation's sixth leading scorer. Uh, he was one of my favorite kind of mid-major players to watch coming into the season drake is the uh the the automatic qualifier out of the missouri valley conference he plays for his dad you love all that stuff mm-hmm. um but i already felt good about drake and that was before andy mm-hmm. i realized that this game was being played in omaha yeah let me just give you some mileage from beasley coliseum in pullman washington where washington state plays to the chi health center Uh, where this game will be played in Omaha, is 1,432 miles. Meanwhile, from the Knapp Center in Des Moines, where Drake plays to the health center in Omaha, is just 137 miles. Wow. Andy, that that is a bummer for Wazoo, right? Coming coming out of the Pac-12 all the way down there to face a team that could drive up and play two hours from now, basically. And and even if Drake, uh, even if Iowa State and Drake meet up after that, Drake's even slightly closer than Iowa State, not enough to make any kind of difference. But mm-hmm. it's just interesting that it's the 10 seed out of this pod that has the best geographical draw. So, Andy, I'm very, very intrigued by what's going to happen in that Omaha pod. No doubt. I, I, I would be a little frustrated if I was a Wazoo fan about getting that draw of, of not only taking on a really good mid-major team in Drake, but also having to play effectively a road game in that one. Uh, for me, the matchup I'm looking forward to the most, uh, a lot of great great games here, but I, I like this 8-9 a lot. Yeah. FAU versus Northwestern, uh, fun matchup here. Obviously, FAU was part of an 8-9 game last year. They were the nine seed against Memphis, escaped in that game, and then, of course, went on their huge run all the way to the Final Four, in part because they did not have to play a one seed in that <laughs> second round game because of Purdue's loss to Fairleigh Dickinson. Uh, regardless, FAU returns basically everybody, really talented team, Elijah Martin, fantastic athlete. John L. Davis has played some great basketball this year. This year, but they're going to have their hands full with Chris Collins and Northwestern. Boo Boo, he's one of the best guards yeah. in the entire country. Uh, absolutely love his his ability to, to score off the dribble, to score from beyond the arc. He's just a, a dynamic, multifaceted player. And I think there's going to be a lot of, of kind of back and forth. Two really good coaches, too, as well, in, in Collins and May. And I think that's a really fun one. I, I don't see either of them really having much of a chance of pulling off an upset over UConn unless UConn's not at full strength for whatever reason, but uh, they're going to give each other a lot of, of, of uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to see those two teams battle it out uh, to see who gets that opportunity to take on UConn in the second round. That's right. Andy, let's think about some sleeper teams in uh, in this region. I'll go ahead with mine, which is San Diego State. Look, the experience factor has got to be a thing. You just mentioned FAU. Um, thankfully for San Diego State, they get at least one more round before they'd have to face UConn. Um, mm-hmm. And so if they can get stuff rolling, they'd be in good shape. Jaden Ledee is a big time name to know. He's one of the best players in the entire country. What a kind of breakout season he has had. And so um, if he's somebody that you didn't pick up on last year, make sure that you don't miss him in this year's tournament while he's still hanging around. Andy, who do you like as a sleeper in this East region? 
I'm going with Drake, and we kind of already talked a lot about why, so I won't rehash too much of it. Obviously, the the geographic uh, impact makes a, a difference for them. I think Darian DeVries is a fantastic coach. Uh, Tucker, obviously, like we said, six leading scorer, twenty plus points per game. Uh, I like their matchup against Wazoo. That's they're going to have a, their hands full if they end up taking on the Cyclones of Iowa State with the best defensive team in the entire country. Uh, I think DeVries is going to have a hard time, you know, getting up to his season average against the Cyclones, but. Uh, of all the tens, I, I do. We'll get to it later. I do have some to ten versus two upsets to potentially talk about, but uh, I I could kind of see it with Drake. Iowa State's a tough second round draw, but I, I could see Drake potentially stunning and pulling off an upset here. Uh, I, I just think this team is is dynamic enough, talented enough, well coached enough to potentially pull it off. Yeah, sometimes you just can't envision it. That's one where I fully expect Iowa State to win that game if that's the matchup, but I can envision a world in which Drake wins it. Yeah. 100%. Well, let's talk about some of these players we need to know. And I think an easy player to pick in the East region would be DeVries, but we have said his name so many times already on the show. I think we can skip him. I'm actually going to pick a player from that first round game against DeVries and Drake, and that's Miles Rice from Washington State. Uh, he's not quite their leading scorer. That belongs to Isaac Jones, but Rice is averaging 15 points, four assists, and three and a half boards, as well as one and a half steals. Not only is he a fantastic player, a key piece to what Washington State and Kyle Smith is doing, but this young man missed all of last year with a cancer diagnosis. It was supposed to be his big breakout season for Wazoo. Instead, he was diagnosed with a form of Hodgkin's lymphoma. He had to go through chemotherapy. It was a really horrific time for him, as anybody who, who has dealt with this you know, personally in their lives knows. And yet here he is back on the court putting up huge numbers for the best Washington State basketball team we've seen in well over a decade. It's a really tremendous story. I know it'll get a lot of coverage and press during their game, and it absolutely should. Really excited to see Miles Rice on the big stage and get some of the attention that he so deserves for being able to return to the court and have this kind of success. Uh, it, it is probably my favorite like individual personal story this year in college yeah. basketball. Andy, for my player, the name you need to know is a player from Illinois, and it's not Terrence Shannon Jr. It is Marcus Domask, who is kind of the other part of that two-headed offensive juggernaut that they have there in Champaign, Illinois. The defense, not so great. But this offense can overwhelm most in uh, most opponents they face. Damask comes to Illinois after four years at Southern Illinois down in Carbondale, um, where he averaged 15.2 points per game for his career. He's averaged he's got 16 points a game this year. Not a career high. He had two years slightly higher than that at Southern Illinois, but is just absolutely doing work. When Terrence Shannon was out with that suspension, here comes Damask taking over basketball games. Andy, he can do it. Again, um, so really curious to see what Illinois looks like as they get into tournament play. Now, North Carolina is back in the NCAA tournament after last year's debacle. They are the one seed in the West region. Can they make a run to the Final Four, or will Arizona or Baylor or one of these mid-major teams looking upset-minded be able to be the one that makes it out of the West region in LA? We'll find out about that in just a second. Right after I tell you that this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our good friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. We just talked about the Iowa State Cyclones. They are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. This team absolutely surprised us all with a dominating performance against Houston in the Big 12 Championship game. Looking up the Big 12, or excuse me, locking up the Big 12 Championship. They say win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what the Cyclones have done uh, last weekend in Kansas City. So take the Nissan Rogue, Pathfinder, or Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Today's episode of Locked On College Basketball is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Folks, Fire TV is your destination, not only from sports, but also for music and everything else out there. They have live games, highlights, in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's March Madness, opening weekend for the MLB season, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. 
We have Amazon Fire TV sticks on literally every single TV in our house. We love the layout. The user experience is fantastic. They also have a remote that is super handy. It has buttons that take you directly to Prime Video, to Netflix, to Disney Plus, or to Hulu, the four places we're going the most often. Fire TV also recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos for your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On, as well as most of the big professional leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to e keep you up to date. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this one. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. All right, Isaac, let's move on down the bracket to the West region. North Carolina picks up the final number one seed here. There was some conversation coming into Selection Sunday. We knew that the three one seeds were going to be locked up by UConn, Purdue, and Houston. We're kind of un unsure where that final one seed was going to go. We did think Carolina was the likely candidate there. We saw them get that final spot. Uh, fantastic draw for them. I think this is for being the fourth one seed, I'm, I don't want to say that this is an easy bracket because I don't think there's really a such thing as an easy bracket. But when you compare this to who UConn has to go through to get to their final four, I think you feel pretty good if you're a North Carolina Carolina fan. Uh, Arizona's a team that's kind of been up and down. Baylor has some struggles on the defensive end. Alabama has even more struggles on that end of the floor. Uh, I, I think you're looking at a, uh, at a region where you, you probably feel okay if you're a Carolina fan. Is that is that fair to say? I think you have to, Andy, but I think that you are right. There is no easy bracket when, you, you know, you start looking at it and we make these broad sweeping, broad brushstroke mm -hmm. kind of statements. And ultimately, at the end of the day, all these teams are here for some sort of reason, either because they're hot right now or because they've had a great season. Yeah. And so North Carolina is going to have a lot to contend with. But yeah, if I look at this and it, like if I'm UConn and I'm the number one overall seed and I had a choice of this bracket or the East bracket, sign me up for this one every day of the week. So, uh, but as you said, it's going to take a lot to get through either one of these. So Andy, let me run us through it real quick and then we'll go from there. By the way, for those of you watching on YouTube, you can see the bracket up for you. Uh, Carolina will play the winner of Howard and Wagner Thursday, 245 on CBS in Charlotte. Um, Carolina favored by 22 and a half over Howard and even more over Wagner. The first tip of the entire tournament, non-slashy edition, is Mississippi State versus Michigan State, the 8-9 game. I love that we got an 8-9 tipping off Thursday and Friday because those games are always intriguing. That game is at Thursday, 12-15, CBS also in Charlotte, Michigan State by a point and a half. St. Mary's, the five seed, takes on 12 Grand Canyon Friday, 10.05. Get your naps in. True TV, that game is in Spokane, Washington. St. Mary's playing in Spokane. Interesting. Uh, FanDuel has it. Gales by five and a half. Four seed, Alabama playing 13. Charleston Friday, 7.30. True TV, also in Spokane. That'll be the game right before that St. Mary's game. Alabama by nine and a half. Bottom half of the bracket, number six, Clemson against number 11, New Mexico. Friday, 310 on True TV. This game's in Memphis. New Mexico, the worst seeded team, the favorite at two and a half points. Number three, Baylor. Number 14, Colgate. That game is Friday, just before the Clemson game, 1240. True TV, Baylor by 13 and a half. That game's also in Memphis. And then the last pod in the West region, number seven, Dayton. Number 10, Nevada. Thursday, 430 on TBS. In Salt Lake City, our guy Leaf Tulane is going to be at these games, by the way. Another worst seed favorite situation, Nevada by a point and a half. Rounding it out with the Gonzaga connection, the two seed Arizona. Wildcats taking on the 15th seed. Lame duck coach situation, Long Beach State. That game's Thursday at 2 o'clock on TBS, also in Salt Lake, Arizona by 20 and a half, just shy of three touchdowns and the points after. Andy. Uh, same question you asked me earlier. As you look at this bracket where we've got multiple of worst-seeded teams favored, what do you see? What game stands out to you? 
Well, one game that I wanted to mention, and it's not the game that I was planning to mention, so I'll just say this quickly since I realized it as we were going through this. We talked about the 10 seed in the East region having a much better geographic draw. That's actually true here, as well as Nevada is far, Reno, Nevada is far closer to Salt Lake City than Dayton is. I don't have the exact mileage like Isaac did in his uh, breakdown in the East region, but I'm pretty sure uh, geographically that is a nice draw for Nevada, just getting an opportunity to play a little bit closer to home. Uh, However, the game that I'm most excited about in this region is the 512. Randy Bennett and the St. Mary's Gales not only having to go to Spokane, where their bitter rival Gonzaga is, and I was telling Isaac beforehand a handful of Gonzaga players and their media availability basically encourage Spokane, local Spokane people to go to the game, wear purple, cheer for Grand Canyon. It's going to be a whole thing. St. Mary's playing in Spokane uh, should be a lot of fun for that one. But I really like this Grand Canyon team as well. Bryce Drew's done a phenomenal job with the Lopes over the last couple of years. Uh, Ty and Grant Foster is one of the best mid-major point guards in the entire country. Uh, I really think Grand Canyon's got an opportunity here. St. Mary's uh, has played the last two weeks without their starting power forward, Joshua Jefferson. He was arguably their third, fourth, maybe best player coming into the, uh, coming up to his injury, uh, 10 points, six boards, really good defensive player. Uh, Mason Forbes has stepped into the starting lineup for them. He is a very good defensive player. He doesn't do much on offense. I think that hurts the Gales enough where I think Grand Canyon could potentially pull an upset here. This is my least chalky region by far. I got quite a few upsets and that's one where I really think that the Lopes could end up advancing past St. Mary's. Did you call him third or fourth? Uh, I'm assuming you're putting Marshall Onis and Mahaney ahead of him. Were you trying to decide between Mitchell Saxon? And yeah, him? it's like it's close uh, between him and Saxon. I think you yeah. could also make an argument that, that either of the bigs are, are better than Mahaney, at least this right. year. But it's, A little it's sophomore right. slump for Mahaney this year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Andy, I like it so much. I really had trouble picking my favorite matchup in this region because I think this region, I and I haven't thought as much about it with the right side yet, but I like the first round matchups, at least here in the West, much better than I did in the East. I, I'm really intrigued by this West region first round matchup. So I've gone back and forth between that first tip of the tournament on Thursday, Mississippi State and Michigan State. But I'm going to land on Clemson and New Mexico. New Mexico is so hot right now, kind of like Hansel in Zoolander, um, coming off that Mountain West run that they had knocking off San Diego State. Um, Clemson has been phenomenal at times and they've been Clemsoning at times and Andy I don't know which version of Brad Brownell's team is going to show up but they've got the personnel but New Mexico has all these like offspring uh that that including their head coach Richard Patino I guess I should say which is kind of funny yeah Uh, the, the lone Patino in the tournament here and so I in New Mexico let's not forget is favored even as the 10 seed by two and a half points and so Andy that that matchup is going to be really fun. I have Clemson, but it wouldn't shock me in any way to see the Lobos rolling on. Yeah, I mentioned that I have a lot of sleepers in this region, and and I was thinking about it. I have the 9 seed, the 10 seed, the 11 seed, or excuse me, the 9 seed, the 10 seed, yeah, the 11 seed, the 12 seed, and the 13 seed all advancing in the first round in my bracket. I have a, a setup for Grand Canyon versus Charleston in the second round if Grand Canyon advances past St. Mary's, Charleston, and Alabama, which, by the way, that might be another first to 90 type situation. Charleston is a top 50 offense in the country at Ken Palm, and I think they're 180th in adjusted defensive efficiency. So they're going to give up 100 points to Alabama. But on the flip side, Alabama might give up about 100 points to Charleston. So if you like scoring, if you're an NBA fan who's coming to college basketball just for March Madness, watch Alabama-Charleston. That is the kind of game that you guys are going to love. But uh, I couldn't pick which of the sleepers I like the best because I like all three of those teams. Uh, I will say this. I do have Nevada and Grand Canyon advancing with the Sweet 16, two double-digit seeds in the Sweet 16. It's been a chaotic year of college basketball. Why not assume that's going to continue to happen in March? Andy, uh, it's a six seed, but I've got Clemson as my sleeper. I just like a lot of the components that they have when they're at the best version of themselves. And that's what a sleeper is, right? The best version of themselves. You look at PJ Hall and Ian Shufflin and Chase Hunter and Joe Girard, who came Mm -hmm. over and switched orange to come from Syracuse to Clemson. Clemson, I got him as a sleeper. Uh, Andy, let's just each mention a player that people may not know that they need to know. 
I'm, I'm going Keenan Blackshear at Nevada. I mentioned Nevada as a team I have in the Sweet 16, so if I'm going to pick them to make a run, i got to pick one of their guys to be the, the breakout player. It's Keenan Blackshear, 15 points, 5 assists, 5 boards, 1.5 steals, 5th-year senior at Nevada. Started his career at Florida Atlantic, was not there uh, when they made their run last year. I have a feeling he's really itching to make a deep tournament run of his own. I think he's got a real chance to lead Nevada to a potential couple of wins here uh, moving past Arizona into the Sweet 16. I've got Dayron Holmes, number two from Dayton. Uh, this man, co-A-10 player of the year. Dayton as a team has not been as dominant as I expected, but he himself has had a great year. 20.4 points per game, 8.4 rebounds, over two and a half assists, 2.6, over two blocks. He's jumped a lot of that up. He's a 6'10 forward, and yet... His three-point shooting is 38.5%, and he's gone from under one attempt a game to 2.5 three-point attempts per game, Andy. So I love Dayron Holmes, folks. Make sure you check him out while he's still in college. Unfortunately, though, I don't think Dayton's moving on past their first game. All right, folks. Those are your East bracket and your West bracket. The left side of this bad boy, the two winners will face off in the final four. Will it be the one seeds, UConn and Carolina? Or will we have someone else coming out of these regions? We'll give you our predictions in just a second. Right after I tell you that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or one of these one seeds we've just been talking about, UConn and North Carolina, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Tonight, in our first slashy games, we've got Howard as a three and a half point favorite over Wagner and Colorado State as a two and a half point favorite over Tony Bennett's Virginia Cavaliers. So if you want to get in on that action, visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, Andy and I have run you through kind of some, some thoughts on the East and West names, games, all sorts of stuff like that. We didn't go game by game because we did that on that bracket reveal show that Andy talked to, or bracket prediction mm -hmm. breakdown show that Andy talked about earlier. But we do want to give you our Sweet 16 up through the Final Four and the MOP from East region. So Andy, uh, why don't you start us in the East, give us your Sweet 16, run us all the way to the Final Four, I'll do it, and then we can give our mops. Our mops. I love it. Uh, yeah, it's funny looking at our notes here. The East region, you and I are a lot more similar than we are on the West region. Excited yes. to get to that one. Uh, for me, uh, very chalk, almost as chalk as you can possibly be. UConn versus San Diego State, that's a one versus five. Iowa State versus Illinois, that's a two versus three. Uh, that's who I have in the Sweet 16. Again, not a lot of surprises there. Only Auburn uh, getting upset out of those top four seeds. Uh, Elite Eight, we're staying shock. UConn versus Iowa State. I wanted to pick Drake. I love that Drake team, like I said, but Iowa State's defense is just too tough. I think you end up with your one versus two there, UConn versus Iowa State. And we're sticking shock. UConn going all the way to the Final Four. I know it hasn't happened since Florida, Florida won back to back in 2006 and 2007, but uh, since then, no national champion, no national champion from the previous year has even gone past the Sweet 16. I think UConn breaks that streak. I think they go all the way to the Final Four, even in this tough East region. And for me, my my most improved or my most outstanding player, not MIP, MOP, is Tristan Newton, starting point guard for UConn. Phenomenal player, the straw that stirs the drink for Danny Hurley's team. As much as Kara Band and Klingon and Castle and everybody else get a lot of the attention. Cam Spencer as well. Newton does a little bit of everything. I think if they're going to advance through all these this gauntlet of teams that they're going to have to face, it's because Tristan Newton is doing work, and I think he ends up taking home that award. The only difference I had in my uh, – this is the one bracket where I've got one through four all making it to the Sweet 16. So the only difference I had from Andy was I have Auburn instead of San Diego State. But then I've got the same Elite Eight matchup, UConn versus Iowa State. But my difference is I have the Cyclones knocking off the reigning national champions and them being the team to go on to the Final Four. Thusly, I don't have Tristan Newton, although I probably would have gone with here Cam Spencer if it's mm -hmm. UConn. I, Andy, I've debated between Taman Lipsy, who, by the way, is an Ames hometown boy. You love to see those kind of moments. And Kashawn Gilbert. I'm going to go with Kashawn Gilbert. I just, he has been playing very well. He had a great Big 12 tournament. He will be my East region mop. Andy, take us into the West. 
Yeah, this is where it gets a little goofy for me. So I got North Carolina. That's not a shock there. They're in the Sweet 16. I got them taking on Grand Canyon. Like I said, Grand Canyon in my brackets play in Charleston in that second round. So the Lopes are the favorite team uh, getting into the Sweet 16, a 1 versus 12 there. I got Baylor, the 3 seed, taking on Nevada, the 10 seed, uh, to round out that Sweet 16 in the West region. Uh, but then – that's where the chalk ends. Or that, or that's where the upsets end. We're not going to get too crazy. We're not throwing Grand Canyon or Nevada in the Elite Eight. We're going Carolina, Baylor, a one versus three. It gets a little bit more boring after the excitement in the first few rounds there. Uh, and then for my final four, I got Baylor upsetting North Carolina. When the Bears are on, they are fantastic. They're a really, really tough team to beat. Can they be on long enough to make it all the way to the final four? We know Scott Drew has gotten there in the past. We know he's a phenomenal X's and O's coach, great at making adjustments. The big key for me is Eves Missy, freshman center for Baylor. Can he slow down somebody like Armando Baycott? Uh, can he play well enough in the games leading up to that to even get Baylor into this situation? If so, I think we could see Baylor. While I think Eves Missy is the X factor, if Baylor does make the Final Four, he's not my pick for most outstanding player. I would go Ray J. Dennis, phenomenal starting point guard for Baylor. Uh, Toledo transfer, averaging like just under seven assists per game this year. He's been a huge piece for them. And I think if Baylor makes it this far, he'd be that MOP. Andy, what a great, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking here for? Revenge for mm -hmm. Baylor after North Carolina knocked them off True. in the 22 NCAA tournament. By the way, uh, your Sweet 16 to Elite Eight changes is a great example of one of our five keys to picking a perfect bracket. Uh, upsets early, chalk late. So by the way, if you want some bracket help, Andy and I also have an episode out today where we're giving you five keys to picking a perfect bracket. Make sure you check that out as well. Andy, I have North Carolina against the five seed St. Mary's. Despite being a little banged up, I think they got enough uh, in Spokane to do what they're wanting to do. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Clemson, I have them against Arizona also. Uh, those are my four Sweet 16 teams. But then, same as you, I've got North Carolina, not same as you in terms of teams, but in terms of chalk, North Carolina versus Arizona in the Elite Eight. But I should mention, even though I have the one versus the two in the East and the West, we actually haven't had a one versus two matchup since 2019, Andy. How about that? That's, that's pretty crazy in any of the regional finals anyway. I, sh I should put it that way. Um, so, and then I have North Carolina beating Arizona. Obviously, if that happens, that will be the, the Caleb Love back against North Carolina game, along with assistant coach Steve Robinson. That's going to be a storyline that everyone will talk about. But uh, the last little bit of history tells us we won't get there. If North Carolina wins that game, I don't see how you pick anybody but RJ Davis to be the MOP, the ACC player of the year. So that's what we're going with. Andy. We do have our, you know, we mentioned Thursday that Mississippi State, Michigan State game uh, will be a big one in the first game of the main part of the tournament. But we do have our first two slashy games. I'm not calling them that other thing. <laughs> slashy games Tuesday night in Dayton. The automatic qualifier play in for the 16 seed is Howard, who is a three and a half point favorite over Wagner. That's 640 on True TV. Winner will play number one, North Carolina in the West. And then the other slashy game is a 10 seed Colorado State, a two and a half point favorite over Virginia. That is the second game, 9 10 Eastern, also on True TV. Winner moves into the Midwest bracket as the 10 seed where they would play the number seven Texas Longhorns. Isaac, so much fun getting a chance to preview this bracket, breaking it down region by region. We'll, of course, be back on Wednesday's episode looking at the South and the Midwest regions, whether Houston and Purdue are the two teams coming out of there, what we think about Kentucky and Tennessee and Creighton, uh, whether Gonzaga is going to be able to avoid a 5-12 upset, all sorts of fantastic storylines coming your way on Wednesday's episode as we break down those two brackets. And then... Then we're, then we're in the madness. We are fully there. I am so excited as a West Coaster. 9-15 is when those get, that Michigan State, Mississippi State game starts. I'm going to have my breakfast, my coffee. I'm going to be sitting on the couch for 11 straight hours. I cannot wait for the madness to begin. Uh, so much fun. We are really looking forward to getting to break down all of those games, all of those matchups right here on Locked On College Basketball. So stick with us if you have not done so. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell so you'll get notified whenever we have a show. We're going to be going live after those games as well. So you can come join us there, hang out with us in the chat, or join us on our Discord channel if you have not done so yet. It is free. There's a link in the show notes on audio and video platforms. Until then, though, apologies to the lawyer family as we get more into production do uh, on, on on tomorrow's show uh, let's go wildcats and until tomorrow 
Peace.